the gospel according to Luke 8, 1 through 3. Soon afterwards, he went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this opportunity and this chance to speak before your people. I pray your will be done and not mine. Amen. It's good to be here with you and share this for a second time today. Uh, uh, when I was first asked uh, to do this, I tried to share it with my colleague, Sandy Krastowski. I said, why don't you come at 8 a.m. and I'll do the other two, but that didn't work. <laughs> uh, so Judy was asking me, Rhonda, what are you going to preach? What's going to be your sermon topic two weeks ago? I'm like, I don't write my topic two weeks ahead of time. Um, so as I started preparing and asking more questions and uh, really learned about what this sermon or this Sunday was about, I quickly knew uh, what verses I wanted to use for this sermon. Um, and I turned to Luke 8, and I titled the topic Pioneering Women. Um, and so just to let you know, I'm going to look for some participation and feedback from you guys. Um, that'll keep it moving fast, and we'll all stay engaged. So as I was thinking about uh, pioneer women, I started thinking about uh, women that I know who have been pioneers or trailblazers. And a few women that came to my mind were um, Sojourner Truth, Harriet, I mean, Sojourner Truth, Madam C.J. Walker, um, Oprah Winfrey, Shonda Rhimes, and then, of course, Bishop Eaton. And I started thinking about, well, maybe some personal women in my life who, who I know who um, have been pioneers for me. And the first person that came to my mind was my grandmother. Um, so I'm going to ask you guys if you can just shout out to me some women that you know famous or personal to you that have been pioneers or trailblazers in your life. So just quick, anybody or everybody, just some women that you know that you know these women, they, they set the stage. Amelia Earhart. Yes. 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 Marilyn Warner. Yeah. Um, so my grandmother is 98. Um, she still lives in her own home. And she's very stubborn. So that's why she still lives in her own home. <laughs> uh, but uh, she has said some really powerful and profound things to me in my life that have helped me. And uh, one of the things that I, I feel that she's done for our family, she grew up in the South, she moved to St. Louis, and then she eventually moved to Milwaukee all to make a better living for herself and her family. Um, so I visit her from time to time. It's one particular Sunday. I usually go over on Sundays. I uh, sat down on her couch, and she just looked right at me, and she said, Rhonda, be who you are. Um, and she touched me again, and she said, be who you are. You understand what I'm saying? And I said, yes, grandmother. And those have been some of the most powerful words and sustaining words for me. And so as I was um, preparing for this sermon, I have it on my phone, just so you know I'm not Facebooking or texting or anything like that. <laughs> I looked up... Uh, Free, dic free dictionary's uh, definition of a pioneer. And a pioneer is one who ventures into unknown or unclaimed territory to settle, or one who opens up new areas of thought, research, or development. And I thought about these women in our story, in our text today, and I saw them truly to be pioneers. These women, like the men, they left their families and friends behind to follow Jesus, and not only did they follow Jesus, but they also helped to fund the movement. And so um, in these short little verses, really mainly one, I learned three lessons from these women. The first lesson that I learned was perfection is not required. As you notice in our reading, some women had demons or sicknesses that Jesus had healed them from. And so they simply just said yes and decided to follow Jesus and be a part of the journey, imperfections and all. So that's our first lesson. You don't have to be perfect 
to be a pioneer or to set the stage or create something new or to even follow Jesus. The second lesson I learned from these women is that kingdom building, it takes all of us. So yes, the men were mentioned, but these women were mentioned that well, as well, meaning that everybody is valued, everybody is important, and everybody is needed in expanding God's kingdom. Amen? I like talk back to it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, and the third lesson I learned from these women is that you have to take risks. And these women, they took a risk. They left their families, they left what they knew, and they followed Jesus, a man who was known to be a rebel in the town, and they gave their money to make sure that this movement was expanded. So, um, which I think is probably the most important lesson in being a pioneer. You have to take risks. You have to venture out into new lands, into new places, to discover what God is calling us to now. And so just to encourage you and to challenge you a little bit, I invite you to think about um, supporting women of the ELCA. As we venture out into new places, I encourage you not to venture out with hands. If the work of WELCA is important to you, don't wait for someone else to support them, you support them. As we see in this last line of the, um, the text, these women, they supported the gospel out of their own means. And I just think that's so important as I look around and I see all these quilts and I went to the um, website of the, the women of the ELCA and discovered that their budget doesn't come from the national church. They're their own separate entity and they're funded by people like you and other women who believe that this work is important. And I just thought that was really amazing and something that should be supported and celebrated. I also um, am encouraged by a new friend of mine. Her name is Lily Gay. She's an artist. She's in her 70s. Um, she is definitely a pioneer. She goes to places around the world that most people wouldn't think of going to. Um, she went to Rwanda of her own means and built a, a place for them to bury the bones of those that have been impacted by genocide. And one of the things she said that uh, propelled her to go there was this quote that I love. She said, I was afraid to be a coward. Um, and that really sticks with me. And so as I leave you, I encourage you, be afraid to be a coward. Venture out and go new places. What is God asking you to risk now? What new lands or new spaces are yet to be explored and discovered? Um, I know right now that the women of the ELCA has an initiative to um, raise health awareness for women and young girls. And one of the things they spoke of was to eliminate stroke and heart disease for women. That's a bold initiative, right? That's going to take serious pioneering, some people that's willing to go and explore and be on the edge and look at things in a brand new way. And I think that's what God is calling us to, to today as a church. And so I just ask you and I encourage you, be afraid to be a coward. Be afraid to um, say no when you should be saying yes to something brand new. You know, today I, I had a really good conversation with one of the ladies from the choir. Uh, she was talking to me about how, I guess, music has changed here and how uh, in order to make this change and be more welcoming and inviting to, to newer people, you had to be more contemporary with the music. Um, so in that small conversation, and I don't even know if she really realizes, but in her own way, she's being a pioneer, making space for new people to settle here in this church. So it's a lot of ways we can be new and live into what God is calling us to do and be now. Amen? So I'm not asking you to go out and, you know, go build a new church or anything like that. It's just stuff that you can do here, even in shifting maybe the way you think or do certain things that says that we are really open and receiving and ready to go and accept people that we maybe not even thought were wanting to be a part of us. Uh, as I leave you, I want to leave you with the mission statement of the women of the EOCA. So I pray that you will move and act with holy boldness and continue to live your mission and purpose statement that reads, as a community of women created in the image of God, called to discipleship in Christ and empowered by the Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to grow in faith, affirm our gifts, support one another in our callings, engage in ministry and action and promote healing, 
and wholeness in the church, the society, and the world. Amen.